Being wrong has never felt so good. Of course, I'm talking about the fact that, well, I kind of the Cowboys win it all in my playoffs prediction video. And I know there's a lot of people that are kind of at the time like, you're believing in the Cowboys. And I'm like, yeah, I don't. I just see them being really good this year. They have so much talent and, and depth and their offense is insane and their defense is really good too. And it won 16 straight at home, and, you know, they, they kind of have, like, a, a mainly home route to the to the Super Bowl. They would have had to just play, you know, the Niners in the championship round if they won all the way, all their games. But the Dallas Cowboys just Dallas Cowboy. Let's just simply put it at that. Dak Prescott, I don't know if he was just looking at the, you know, previous games Joe Barry coach, which if he did, you're probably thinking, wow, this is going to be a breeze. He was seeing ghosts. He was making bad reads. There was two interceptions, one for six. Second, I mean, Jair could have had one too, but obviously, you know, kind of like they they touched each other. Yeah, they okay. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> and he couldn't get in the end zone, obviously. But uh, Dak could have thrown more. I mean, there was a couple like where there was like a little shovel, and it almost went to Quay. And it's just like there was a lot of bad decisions in that game from Dak. Their defense couldn't do anything, and ultimately, Green Bay. Held up, you know, that offensive line did just enough, and there's no Cowboys fans able to cry this week about Micah Parsons never gets a call. I mean, he got multiple holding calls in that game, but ultimately Dallas just didn't win. I would say it's weird because it feels like the Cowboys right now are almost like the Packers of the last, like, decade, if you will, as, uh, you know, they have all the talent in the world, but they just can't put it together, right? Like, they have all these great individual players, but they can't put it together. And that's how the Packers were for so many years with Rodgers. It felt like, you know, after that Super Bowl win, um, I don't know. I just don't know how the the, pa the Packers won that game. You know, as much as, like, I'm not, you know, I, obviously as a Packers fan, you couldn't tell by now, I wasn't like, oh, the Packers have no chance. But, you know, if I'm a betting man... I would have bet on the Cowboys, right? It's just, uh, well, I think the Packers could have covered or whatever. But as far as, like, winning goes, obviously I said, you know, the Cowboys are probably going to win. Um, and, you know, I even corrected myself. I was like, I don't see a way that the Packers win. I just I just don't think they will, which is fair. I mean, I, I think it's a little crazy that these, uh, you know, announcers are getting in, in analysts are getting a little roasted for you know saying you know all voting on the Cowboys to win you know there was some like Nick Wright that was like zero percent Green Bay win. do you not know the sport of football there is never a zero percent chance a team can win can win there's never ever like you're crazy if you say that I don't care if it was the 0-16 Lions there's no way I would say zero percent chance but enough of that we're gonna be looking more at the Cowboys team as you're probably thinking wow rebuilding this good of a team this might be a short one maybe it will be or Maybe we have the real-life Cowboys here in our rebuild. Uh, the last Cowboys rebuild I did was like four months ago, and it was with Trey Lance when they made a trade for him, who is now a 65 overall. I know there are some people calling for him to come into the game. I mean, as far as Green Bay as a contained team, Trey Lance probably puts up over 100 rushing, even if he only started in the second half. That's how bad Green Bay is, containing quarterbacks. But I think one of the biggest things that this Cowboys team could use is a true second wide receiver. Brandon Cook is a good receiver. Gallup is a receiver, <laughs> but a true number two wide receiver, not even like CD lamb level, but like, I don't know, like a lesser T Higgins or something like a Michael Pittman or something like that. Somebody dependable to catch the ball. You know, CD lamb is clearly a great elite wide receiver. I don't know how the hell he's not an, uh, an X factor. Like if you're putting Pollard at superstar lambs, obviously an X factor, you know, when you're comparing position to position, uh, run game really wasn't that special for the Cowboys. Defense, once again, really good individual players. Lawrence and Parsons were very good, but the Packers found a way to block them. Deron Bland, who had a really good year this year with all those pick sixes, he did not have a good game. He got smoked in that game. Uh, the safeties looked completely lost, and I will say the D-line played pretty well, but as the game kept going on and on and on and the Cowboys offense was struggling, they started a weak down, break down, and, uh, or get weak and break down, and the run game you know, sort of to die a little bit too. Uh, but as far as a rebuild standpoint goes, need a new left out, probably need a new middle linebacker, and then I don't know about Clark. He's fast, obviously, but he's kind of raw. So I don't know. I just felt like if I'm going to rebuild this Cowboys team, unless they do something crazy in the draft, like draft a quarterback, which I just don't see happening, you know, this will probably be the last rebuild I do with the Cowboys. And no better time to do a Cowboys rebuild than when everyone's talking about them. I mean, there's probably people in North Korea that have seen highlights of the Cowboys losing the game. You know, and it's harsh because it's like, I'm sure there's great fans for Cowboy, uh, for Dallas that just, that aren't 
like the normal Cowboys were used, you know, fans were used to hearing, but it's just the loud, you know, if you want to call them minority, whatever, the loud group that, you know, it just makes people want to <laughs> want to clown on them. So it's just it's it's a tough one for the for the Cowboys fans that can eat humble pie and they're eating a little bit more than they probably should be. But, uh, you know, it's just the way it goes. And, you know, it's fun. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's not wrong that uh, when Cowboys fans saying, you, you know, everyone hates us. I wouldn't say because they ain't us. Not anus. You know, that's the whole interview joke. But uh, 35 to 14, I mean, kind of closer to what the actual score was. But I can't lie. You know, near the end, I was like, oh, crap. Oh, crap. I forgot. Joe Barry, defensive coordinator. Oh, no. And here we have a Niners versus Ravens Super Bowl rematch, by the way. I was probably also uh, rambling a bit there in the beginning. I, I apologize. I can't ramble from time to time. But we got the Niners versus the Ravens. Uh, of course, the cool thing is, thank you, EA. And I know they usually do this anyways. But they had the wild card active roster situation. So I didn't have to force wins. And, you know, we have weird, like, draft pick tiebreakers and all that. We're at the wild card round, which is, oh, thank you, EA. I love you now for the moment. Um, but Ravens versus Niners. Uh, the Ravens do win, of course. Take a quick look at that one. Uh, where the hell is... I don't know why I went this way instead of the other way. Um, but the Ravens, there they go. 10-7, 36-28, to 28, and then 28-13. to 13. So they have the Steelers winning. I mean, it could happen. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. But, um, yeah, let's, uh, I guess, take a quick look at who won MVP and all that. Oh, we can't look. Well, there's that. Because, obviously, there could have been some award wins, which would have set this team up with potential dev ups but either way you know this is uh this is what everyone's like dev up should look like right oh Dak goes to x factor oh god see lamb at least he's an x factor anyways ferguson's a star dev player looking at the defense i don't oh bland goes up to star so yeah i mean there's not a whole lot to rebuild on this team but money is definitely not a free thing right there's there's some contracts here they're going to be a problem Dak is not a cheap quarterback right now but let's look at these re-signings because this will be the first time I'm actually going to get a chance to look as, uh, once again, we start in the wild card round now, which, like I said, thankfully, I uh, you know, it's so annoying going from week 10, simming all the games, making sure the draft picks are about as right as possible. Michael Parsons, fifth-year option, obviously. But look at this money. It's a problem. Pollard, that's a good question, especially in rebuild sense because Pollard's not very good in sim, but he's a high overall running back. I got to keep him. I don't know about real life. What are they? What's what's the consensus? Because I feel like with a line as good as the Cowboys, a passing attack that was as good as the Cowboys, Pollard should have been a little bit better. You know, he, he was nowhere near as good. And we can't even afford Tyron. Okay, so this team, you know, we are losing starters out the gate. We are losing these guys. And I mean, I don't know how this works if I try to tag Tyron Smith, but I would love to because I don't want to replace, you know, an all pro tackle. I would like to do this, but uh, yeah, we're already broke. So a different type of rebuild, if you want to call it a reload. The reason why I didn't want to call it a reload is because, well, it seems like every year the Cowboys are in a reload, but maybe at some point you just need to accept it's a rebuild. I don't, I don't know. That's just that's just a talking point. We're going to tag him. We're now $17 million in the hole. I don't know how the hell you get out of this. Do we even get to play? Like, don't you have to get under the number to, like, actually play games? So, like, are, is this team... What the hell? Wait, did they pay Terrence Steele this kind of money? Holy crap. Is that the fleecing of a lifetime? He was awful this year. And his overall reflects it. We have a 74 overall making like 20 million a year. 15-ish, 20 million a year. There is no shot. We are so screwed. Bland is going to end up leaving us. Oh, no. Yeah, I, <laughs> I might have to restart the rebuild because I'm not sure how it works. Like, can we even play if we're under the mark? Like, am I was I supposed to get rid of Tyron Smith there? I don't know. I'm just going to play it up. I don't really care. I didn't want to lose Tyron Smith, so I, I don't lose Tyron Smith. What can I tell you? I just don't lose him. Um, free agents. I mean, we'll take a look, but uh, believe it or not, don't believe we're going to have any options here. Uh, Josh Allen, the X factor in free agency. There's some decent names there, but uh, I don't care. We're broke. It is draft time, my dudes. Uh, we see the Bears with pick one overall, but then that's like it. The rest is like 
kind of wrong. Uh, not, not even kind of wrong. Like, very wrong. But let's see if the Bears take uh, Marvin like they usually do. And they do. No Caleb Williams here. I'm going to go to 24. We have a lot of 1-2s. And I think, okay, I did not expect certain players to be where they were. Uh, but they're still really good wide receivers. I was kind of expecting that, at best, maybe Brian Thomas, maybe a Mitchell, maybe Franklin. Franklin would be very interesting to add a little bit of speed there. Uh, I didn't know who was going to be here. This is a really tough one for me because I do know a little bit about the devs, right? I know uh, Troy Franklin is normal dev, but he has insane upside, even though Leggett might be the fastest in the entire draft. Um, he's 23, so I can't go 23 versus 20, even if he was superstar in this class. I don't know because I'm probably never going to draft him, but Thomas looks like the best to me, and it's going to be hard for me to pass on him here. And as much as Egbuka looks really good, he's another kind of slot wide receiver. And CeeDee Lamb already played a ton from the slot this year. I don't really think they need that. They need a true boundary guy. And Brian Thomas is huge. So we're going to be going Brian Thomas. I wanted to go with, as of late, kind of uh, wide receiver you. But LSU's got some great receivers as well. And uh, we're going to be getting ourselves a hidden dev Brian Thomas with a little bit of speed. 6'4". I'm trying to think of who the hell he reminds me of this kind of size and speed. DJ Chark? I don't know if that's a good thing, though. But uh, it's good for us. He looks like he's going to be great. I think we drafted him once before, but uh, not with a team as good as the Cowboys. So we're going to see what happens there. Uh, as looking at some of our other guys, we have linemen. I really did want a running back. As I don't know what we're going to do with Pollard. We did offer him a 3 or 30. He accepted it, but... Allen could be a decent running back of the future, whereas Pollard, two years from now, is probably going to need to be replaced, maybe three at, at the, like, you know, kind of worst, which means Allen would still be here if we drafted him. He looks pretty damn good, and I always see him develop pretty well in Sim. Morgan would be great. I maybe should have went for the tackle, but I need the, uh, the, the receiver game shored up a little bit. I really want Jordan Morgan, though. Look at all the freaking A's he has. Maybe we find a way if he's still here in the second round, but... Other than that, I just don't think without a 4th, 5th, or a 6th round draft pick, there's much we can do unless we really use it all for this year. And he is gone. There's a couple of other options here, but I worry about going linemen in this class. I've been burned too many times with normal devs. Did Was Guyton a guy that we either A, drafted, or B, was even hidden? Oh, man. I really don't want to trade up, and it's a crap lineman. I can't. We got other needs. We have other needs. We have we have a linebacker we need, which I don't even know if we're going to get. And we have uh, some other positions on the line, potentially. Uh, wide receivers are still there, but obviously, you know, we're kind of getting... I guess, to be fair, some of these guys, like McConkey are kind of projected a little bit, you know, a little bit later. But Allen, maybe, could be our guy. Uh, Frazier Cohen is there. Zinter is there. I mean, do we go O-line this high? We, pr we probably need to, but I just don't, once again, I just don't trust the class because, you know, there's not as many hiddens in this class, which, once again, I kind of agree with because I feel like EA's gone a little crazy, but at the same time, I get it because you can't really dev up linemen effectively. Uh, we know ja well, Actually, was this the same Nelson we took? We took a Nelson. I don't know which Nelson it was. Maybe it was full. I don't know. I can't remember if we took Haynes. I, I don't remember. We need a center, though. Was Zach Frazier a hidden dev? I don't remember. He looks pretty good. I'm going Zach Frazier. I'm never drafting linemen in this class again. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And once again, we really don't have the draft picks. I'm going to trade to 24. Or not trade, but move down. We don't, we don't have any value to trade. Oh, man. Oh, man. That really is not good. We need a linebacker pretty badly. I don't know if we're going to see one here, though. Uh, have a couple of linemen. Nothing crazy, though. Pass rush doesn't hurt either. Linebacker, Colston's the last one. I can't remember if we drafted him either. Safety, Jaden Hicks is kind of a future pick, but right now, Colston, if he's good enough, would be a guy that I would start now. I mean, not a whole lot of speed in this draft class, it seems like, either at linebacker, so that's kind of the best you're going to get with that. Uh, offensive lineman, we could use the tackle, too, because Tyron Smith's probably going to be gone. We probably should have been gone. Uh, do we try to trade up after this to grab uh, Kieran Omega DJ? I don't know if that's his name or how it's said. I'm sorry, but uh, I think I got to go Colson based on need alone. I really do. Junior Colson, 85 speed, 86 excel, 22. I'm hoping he's halfway decent. Otherwise, I just sold because Overshone could just play there in instead. But the Packers, ironically enough, um, let's trade with them if we can. 
Do I really want to jeopardize the future this much? A third and fourth next for like a late third this year. I mean, we're probably projected to be another playoff team. You know, worst case, it's like they move up a few spots in the third. They gain a fourth. I think that's fair. And I'm a little surprised they took it, to be honest, because, you know, a high upside Cowboys team, even if they don't you know, win the Super Bowl, they're still probably going to make the playoffs. And that's really all that matters in this case for, for the Green Bay Packers trading with us. Once again, I really did want a backup running back, but uh, I think... Think, even though I could get better in the defensive trenches, we're going to get better in the offensive trenches, hopefully. Oh! Hidden Dev! N thank you! Thank you! I know of a Hidden Dev lineman now. I know of one. I think we know of another one, too. Do we? I Actually, that might be the first Hidden we drafted in this class, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully there's a running back there. That would be a freaking clutch... But, like, most of the guys are not it and Dev. Um, Sturdivant there, you know, he's not a bad name. What about running backs? I'm trying to think if I recognize any of these. Uh, I think we're going to go Sturdivant. I don't know if he's even supposed to be there, but he always goes UDFA. Probably never going to be anything for us, but it's something. Seventh rounder, why not, you know? But let's uh, let's go into the draft recap. See uh, what we drafted, of course. Not the best draft. We landed a, a normal Dev lineman, but then again... Tyler Smith was a normal dev lineman for a while in the game, and he still developed at like a 78 overall. 73 is not great, but it was an immediate need, in fairness. And then uh, our left tackle may even play right tackle. It's weird because Terrence Steele has a crazy contract, but he'll never develop because he's he's a bad overall and bad you know dev, so he's kind of screwed. I think maybe we just start this guy at right tackle and see what we got. Really good pass block anyways, so I might end up doing that. I don't know what we're going to do with Terrence Steele. I think we're just screwed. Um, Terrence Steele really stole from this team, let me tell you that. But Brian Thomas, the 76 overall, six foot four wide receiver. I mean, he looks amazing. He looks amazing. He's the new number two. Cooks goes this a lot. If there's any savings from getting rid of Gallup, I'll do it, but I don't think there is. 84 is a pretty cool number, so why the hell not? And uh, yeah, that was the biggest positional need, wide receiver two, in my opinion. I, I think they can easily get, you know, Cooks if they keep him uh, somehow. Uh, and uh, Gallup to, like, perform equally as a number two, but having a true number two that can go up and get it and is just, like, strong and tough, I mean, I think this team needs that. That's why I didn't go with Igbuka. I just think uh, I think the team doesn't need another slot-type wide receiver. Not that CeeDee Lamb's bad, obviously, but, you know, it's just... I just want that, all right? I just want that. I just wanted a boundary guy, and we got one. They also got to fix this. Um, I, I don't understand why we're talking about this would put your team over the salary cap accepted. We're already over the salary cap. He has zero. I could see if maybe there was like 10K we lose in cap or something, like a penalty. He is full on saving money if you get rid of him. There, there is no penalty. I don't know if that's the way it is in real life, but in game, there is zero penalty for losing him. I need to save any money I can. I know it'd be kind of crazy for them to already get rid of him. I got to do it. I need to save all the money I can get. We need any rollover, which is not going to happen, that we can get. Gallup, unfortunately, is uh, locked into some money here himself. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's no shortage of talent at this tight end, or this tight end wide receiver position. It's just uh, there's some guys that are locked into some contracts that I'm not super fond of. I also kind of wonder if Brian Cooks is on a more than one-year deal. Uh, if I was Brandon Cooks, Cooks, I'd be like, screw this. I am not going to another team where I don't know if I'm going to be winning. I, you know, I keep getting thrown to the side, even though I'm putting up numbers for every team. I would be like, yeah, give me a couple of years on a good team. We have no corners, by the way. I literally cannot sign corners. I'm going to have to put red wine at cornerback. Like, we're just... I remember red wine. I used to use him in franchise so much. You remember that? You remember that? I remember that. But I think that's the cheapest we're going to be able to get because any more players we release and we just can't replace them. But I suppose we're not as negative as we could be. Like, what are we, like negative uh, eight, maybe a nine? It's fair enough. Also, for anyone kind of wondering, this is usually what my kind of slider set looks like. If you're doing a 10 or plus year rebuild or you're actually playing as the team, I wouldn't recommend going this high. But for a five-year-ish rebuild, this kind of makes it where the guys that you draft that are like hidden dev or superstar or whatever, decent overalls, they develop into the players they should be in time um and it's not too overpowering um but yeah running back it's hard to tell because like we have a superstar so usually i try not to put it too high when we have a superstar because then they'll just get to like a 99 overall but 
maybe 152-ish quarterback 138 because quarterbacks usually do dev pretty well uh, but this is pretty much the the position group uh you know dt a little bit higher because you know their their ratings like block shed or if they're a pass rusher get up high but their overalls usually don't and you know overall does tie very heavily into how well the sim goes but this is usually what I do. Edge, it's tougher because if you have a guy that's superstar, he's going to get to like a 90-plus overall so quickly. But if they're normal or they're star, it's going to take a long time to develop. So it's a real tough balance. That's all I can really say about it. Here we go to the first season, technically. Uh, our offensive line has a couple of new names in there. Uh, Dallas knows how to draft them. So if they did something like this, it wouldn't surprise me to see those two guys put up uh, numbers and... And obviously have a great start to their uh, careers. It just seems to kill it they, every time in the offensive line. Uh, but looking at the receivers, we got a, once again, new true boundary guy uh, with a bunch of talent in behind. So if there's injuries, which usually seems to be. Uh, they, they've got depth. Running back Pollard. Depth at run, uh, you know, running back's not great, but pretty decent quarterback in Dak Prescott, even though it definitely seemed like the lights were a little too bright. He put up some numbers statistically. There was some good throws. But there was a lot of times, not even just the picks themselves, but close calls. There was a lot of times where it just seemed like he was panicky. You know, he's panicking. And for the most part, the pressure really wasn't that great. I mean, Green Bay blitzed a lot of the times and didn't get there. The thing was, the coverage was pretty good. So uh, I'll give him, you know, Green Bay that. But um, Bell, completely forgot about Bell. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of sitting here like, why did I draft someone? This guy at least has some potential. I could have waited on linebacker. But we're here now. Did we improve the team a whole lot? Probably not, but at the same time, you know, this is a team that's struggling with money, and we kept the team as intact as possible and improved at certain positions. I mean, Thomas has a huge upside, and I'm hoping this Cowboys scheme can cook it. You know, I'm just... I don't know if it will, but uh, we're also f five players short of a full roster. <laughs> that's insane, but of course... Uh, you know, maybe there's some restructure things I can do. I haven't really touched the restructuring because I just don't trust EA with that kind of stuff. It's somehow it'll mess up if I click it. It'll somehow pay them double. You know, I, I probably mentioned it once before, but, uh, when we were the Vikings last year for our online franchise, you know, the fifth year option wasn't like working properly and it wasn't giving me a fifth year option. And, you know, that fifth year option with a guy like, uh, Justin Jefferson, who's asking for a ton of money is pretty big, right? So the fact that I couldn't get it, I tried to re-sign him to a regular contract. It really wasn't working. It was going to cost too much. I was like, screw that. Going to go with the, the fifth-year option. So because they didn't give me an option for it, ironically enough, I had to manually add it. And for some reason, the game basically doubled the contract. And there was no way to fix it. There was zero way to fix it. Uh, and that was pretty much it. The The franchise kind of, thankfully, died shortly after. So, uh I didn't have to deal with the situation that that was going to arise. But, yeah, I just I don't know if I trust EA with contract stuff right now. I'll let the real-life team struggle with uh, the financials, and I'll just let me wing it. I completely forgot that Dak got a dev up from his end-of-season stats. Uh, he also got 15K from a breakout. I, w I just kind of went through the motions. I forgot that he was an X-Factor, so I thought he was going to Superstar to X-Factor. Didn't see the, the red flash, and uh, I was like, oh, he didn't get it. But, no, he got it. 15K XP. That's free. Oh, Digazua with the DevOp. I don't know if it's going to matter because he's like 26. He's like a 79, 80 overall. His ceiling's probably like 85, but it's definitely better than not having it. But it's week 11. We're playing pretty well. We have a lot of money, but there's also a lot of contracts. Oof. I know there's been talks about like Dak needing a contract and wanting one like right away. But after that playoff game, man, you're feeling a little less confident with him. Are you not? You're feeling a little less confident. Um, 123 mil looks great, but that is going to be gone so quickly. Uh, CD Lamb, it's 30 million per year, which is pretty fair at this point. A five-year, 131. You, that's probably going to be a four-year because a lot of wide receivers have been wanting those contracts that get them to about 29. Um, but that it is what it is. Demarcus Lawrence, man, he is really good, and he's always been one of my favorite Madden players. He always performs in sim. You can see there, seven and a half. He's going to put up even more than that. I mean, I guess I got to try to keep him. So now we're down to 71 mil. Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, I think, is automatically gone just because we're so broke. Uh, Cooks is 100% gone. Bell is a fair price, but I didn't really anticipate him being a guy that I would keep, so it's kind of a weird one. I think we can do better. 66 tackles on par for another 100. It would suck if he got a dev up, but if he doesn't get a dev up, I'm chilling. Odigazua, I think he just got to rebuild the defense here a little bit. 
I just think we need to save some money here and rebuild the defense. I don't hate a Digazua, though. So I might come back to that contract. Tyler Smith, I think that's a fifth-year option for sure. I don't know what to do about the elderly lineman. Dak Prescott in real life. I mean, I think the contracts, you know, it's it's a little bit less than this. But in, in game, as a 92 overall X Factor, I have no choice. I really do. Uh, 25 mil. I think it's time to rebuild a little bit. Retool. And uh, that starts with losing some cornerstone players. So as much as this felt like a... Okay, this is just, you know, why is he even rebuilding this team? It's really good. We are broke. You know, we are broke. 25 mil left. Losing your franchise left tackle, a franchise guard, starting middle linebacker, a solid slot receiver, a starting linebacker, a starting DT, and all of your depth is big. I mean, it's big when she asks you how big your weenie is. But Tony Pollard has a, a breakout chance at, I don't know, it's, that's a lot. Jeez, Dak is cooking. 30,000 XP this season. Bro, I've never had this before. Three breakout QB uh, scenarios this season. For a quarter that I thought was X-Factor, and he completed all three. Say what you want about Dak in real life, I don't care. In-game, he's worth keeping. He's 100% worth keeping. And it's weird because like, it's like, yeah, we're doing a rebuild of the quote-unquote real-life Cowboys, but at the same time, some parts of I got to follow through with Madden, right? Like... Uh, are the Cowboys thinking about moving on from Dak after this season? I mean, maybe, but it's nowhere near a for sure thing, obviously. As you know, the, he's been good. He's been very good. And it's, you know, it's kind of like the Vikings with Kirk Cousins. Like, oh, can we do better than Kirk? Maybe. But life without Kirk has been pain. So why would we? And I keep this uh, upgrade up because holy crap, that's an upgrade and a half. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I think there's a good chance to resign him, but maybe not as much as we had to pay. And here we are going on to the wild card round. It is us in there. Sadly, no number one seed. This is another number two seed situation because the Niners, it is. Okay. 13 and four versus 13 and four. Uh, we probably, I mean, obviously there could have been a head to head game. There could have been uh, similar games, but maybe deserve to win as uh, we had six and oh, which is not easy for any division let alone a division that features, you know, the Eagles still, who are 7-10 and 10, in fairness. Uh, but let's take a look. Dak was the number one quarterback, which is pretty good for yards, maybe even MVP. Uh, but this is what the, the game looked, you know, the season looked like. Not great in the beginning, and then finished out really strong. There was a couple of okay uh, opponents in there. But, uh, yeah, that's a 13-4 season for the Dallas Cowboys. Could drop off next season, though. I know we have that Cowboys scheme, and I'm probably going to stick with it all the way through. That is a fat MVP for Dak Prescott. Oh, my God. That might be, like, the best season I've seen from a Sim quarterback this year. Like, even if you were to add, you know, scenario teams where we, you know, like the, you know we put, like, a 99 overall wide receiver, 99 left tackle, right tackle. I don't know if I've seen better than this. Touchdown to pick ratio is off the charts. The yards are amazing. Completion percent is 75%. A 130 passer rating on a season. And he really didn't have much help. Pollard wasn't great, but hopefully Brian Thomas was. He was, but CeeDee Lamb was next level. Cooks, very good. Ferguson, not bad. This was a very good offensive season. Uh, the right tackle wasn't even bad. Nine sacks allowed for a tackle is not bad in Sim. Parsons with 14 and a half. Lawrence at 13. Didn't really see much from the DTs, but that is A-OK. -okay. Those guys are great. Trayvon Diggs was back and strong with four interceptions. Two for Bland. Kicking, only missed one for Aubrey. Uh, Anger, pretty damn good. Kicker turn, punt return game, kind of uh, lacking. I kind of let the AI choose that, but definitely kept Turpin around because Turpin's a pretty good kicker turner. Uh, but Dak Prescott, uh, MVP of the league, not really surprising there. Those numbers were insane. Uh, coach of the year goes to Shanahan. Where is our coach of the year? Where is our coach of the year? I want it. We deserve coach of the year. Uh, offense player of the year, Lamb, not bad. Uh, no, defense player of the year could have been Parsons. Oh, that really sucks, but it's a quarterback. What can you do? Uh, Thomas with number two for rookie of the year. Didn't really have a defensive starter on D, you know, for the rookies. Dak, best quarterback, running back, not on the low, oh, number eight, actually. Uh, wide receiver, CD Lamb. Uh, Thomas at eight. Don't know if he gets a dev up. Be great if he did. And speaking of dev ups, Tyler Smith. So we're potentially losing our two, like, cornerstone superstar dev linemen. But Tyler Smith is going to be joining it. So we at least have another, uh, you know, superstar lineman. The two DT uh, DNs. 
uh, going to be Pro Bowlers at least, even if they didn't win an award. Uh, Trayvon Diggs at four for DB, and then we got the best kicker. So a couple of dev ups, including a, a kicker dev up, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but let's go into this wild card game going against the LA Rams. Uh, 83 overall, we're 89. Let's see it. Going to the end of the game. Looks like we are left, uh, right to left. So two touchdowns, miss an extra point though, which sucks. 27 to zero. This Rams team seemingly does not stand a chance. 34 to zero, 34 to three, 41, 48 to three. 48 to three is hands down easily the craziest sim I've ever seen. And I know you can say, oh, it's the 83 overall Rams. I've seen worse teams. I have seen worse teams, and they have played better than that. 48 to three, I think, is, if I can remember remember correctly, the craziest score I've ever seen in a playoff game. That is absurd. 253 yards, five touchdowns to zero interceptions, whereas Stafford had zero touchdowns of four picks. I mean, almost added the same amount of interceptions and completions. That's, I mean, nine. That's kind of crazy. Uh, Pollard, pretty good. Lamb, really good. Thomas with two touchdowns is great. Uh, looking at, oh, they got Joe Alt. So they got a left tackle, franchise tackle potentially. Lawrence with two sacks. Byron Young with one. Parsons with one. Bland with two interceptions, tying his regular season numbers. Diggs with one and Wilson with one. Kicking, uh, we missed the extra point, but outside of that, I mean, it was pretty clean. Not that he needed to kick a field goal anyways. It's a lot of touchdowns with no field goals. It's pretty impressive. But uh, moving on to the divisional round is that was like basically a bye week. Holy crap. That is pain. And I will say, that's kind of probably how most people thought that that, that Cowboys versus Packers game was going to go. And it really, you know, that's kind of insane. But uh, there's that. It is crazy, though, how divisional matchups work, though, isn't it? Like... How the the Bears, I know the Bears have been improved, you know, vastly improved in the second half of the season, but they kept it really close against Green Bay. Maybe there were some calls that kept it closer than it needed to be, but, and then you look at the Cowboys game where, like, yeah, the score finished kind of, you know, closer, but it was mainly because Green Bay took the starters out. What an easy route. Now, the Falcons could beat us. They've won a lot in sim, but, I mean, this is, this is favorable so far. But then, you know, that game, it's just like, hey, those divisional matchups, they're so crazy. If it's a year one Super Bowl, it's going to be weird. But at the same time, even when we win the Super Bowl year, we'll still have at least two seasons, maybe more. Because I do want to see what happens after we potentially lose Tyron and Zach Martin. Uh, if I had to choose one to lose, it's tough because Zach Martin's been the more consistent player. And he's played more as far as, like, injury concern goes. But tackle is a more important position. So, I, I mean... The way Tyron Smith played for us. Look at this see, game, though. I mean, a much different game here. Uh, I feel like you got to go Tyron Smith just because of the position importance. Fourth and one. They punt it. There's no way. That is EA's coding at its finest, and that's going to send us to the championship round. So far, haven't played against too many high overall teams, but I got to say, the Falcons gave us a run, and that was with Bijan playing pretty bad. So uh, Thomas with another two touchdown uh, performance. Jake Matthews getting smoked. Parsons getting his uh, his numbers up in this one. And clean game from the kicker. We needed every bit we could get in this one as we barely won that game. Falcons really tried to pull off that upset, but we are moving on. Is it going to be the Niners? Of course, we've seen that they stole the number one seed against us. And uh, we want our revenge. Although we kind of don't, actually. We, we hope that they lost before this. I, I don't want the revenge that bad. I'd rather have them uh, just be gone already. But let's see. Let's see who they got. Is it, is it the Niners? It's the Lions. A little ref ball rematch. They're 8-9 and nine and they're in here? What the hell is this? 8-9. and nine. Losing record in the championship round. Go against the Seahawks. Not the toughest game, right? Like They're not like elite, elite across the board. And then the Niners they beat, though. Whoo-wee! That is not good. Goff did play pretty poorly, but we'll see. The Niners are an insane defense, though. So maybe uh, maybe coach name is correct for once. Let's see it. 8-9 Lions, very high overall, but we are an 89 overall, and we were 13-4. Give it to us. It's the Ravens waiting in the Super Bowl. The Bills were killing some teams, too. So 21-7 for the Ravens over the Bills is pretty impressive. 14 to 10. Come on, get a stop, defense. Not you, not you, Lions. As they uh, they get it, get the stop there at least. It's 21 to 17. Field goal. Come on, touchdown. Nice up eight. They get the touchdown with a two point. Oh my God, it's the fourth quarter already. It's so fast. That's what she said. Um, touchdown. 
Up by seven. Fourth and four. Did they get it? They got it. I thought they got stopped. 18 seconds left. They got it. There's three timeouts left. It's either overtime or somehow field goal range. Damn this Lions team. Damn you. Obviously, I'm not going to return it just because we have the timeouts. If we had no timeouts, maybe try it with Turpin. But timeouts with some pretty good weapons. They're telling us to not go for it. I kind of, you know, when I think of teams that, you know, should probably just like, oh, crap, I forgot to change Thomas. I forgot about that draft class glitch. You know, teams that shouldn't be going for it in, uh, you know, before half or before the, the quarter's over for one of these types of situations is this team. I remember like not so long ago, there goes CeeDee Lamb. Wow, Dak, what a throw. But uh, I remember the Cowboys had like a pick six, I think, before half at one point. It like kind of deflected off the, the receiver's hands, and it went. Uh, what do we do here? I can't believe that. CeeDee Lamb's open for 25-plus, and he just misses. That's crazy. Clock's not really a concern because, you know, worst case, we just have to punt. Ferguson? What is... Wow, what a catch, though. Dak has a very bad release in this game. I did not know that. I mean, last time I used Dak was a long time ago, and not in fairness, but that release is some booty. I mean, they're they're locking down. Yeah, that's gonna just be a, a best hail mary. That coverage was crazy. It's like I said, I always say it because it just feels weird, but. Our Texans franchise, where we have the sliders hurting us more than helping us, it feels like these all Madden base sliders a lot of the time are actually tougher. And this ball is going to get to the end zone. I thought we caught that thing. Kind of game came down to us. Really good pressure by the Lions, and uh, even better coverage leads us to have a really good opportunity taken away from us right before the end of regulation. And instead, this is going to be going to overtime. Lions control the coin toss. And they do not get it. I'm actually going to kick. I said it before. I think with the way the coding is in the game, getting the Lions to punt is a lot higher of a chance and a better chance to win, giving them the ball first. You know, if they're in like a fourth and long, you know, they're not in a good spot. But if we score a touchdown, they're going to go all out, right? Oh, my. Oh, I don't know what just happened. It was like a huge rushing touchdown. And somehow we have the ball at the 11-yard line and we're in the Super Bowl. What just happened? Fumble recovery. Oh, so what it was is a fumble, but the game glitched out thinking it was a run because it was a run play. Mozzie Smith with the recovery. And boy, would there be some apologies. There'd be so many teams that are like, what? And analysts and fans be like, why would, you why would you kick the ball first, huh? Even though the rules have changed and it really kind of doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I mean... There you go. There you have it. That's why you put the pressure on them and boom, just like that. You get a fumble and short field situation. You win the game without even having to try. Beautiful decision. Beautiful finish. And it is on to the Ravens. Malik Hooker with an upgrade. Give us plus two to pursuit, I guess, is what I was clearly talking about. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's just let's just auto and do one of those and bop, bop, bop. Let's go up against these uh, these Ravens in the Super Bowl. I mean, maybe the Cowboys are a Super Bowl year one team, and real life has it all wrong. The Cowboys, the, the EA has it all right with their scheme and you know their their sim luck. It's it's real life that has it wrong. <laughs> but here is the team, anyways. Any dev ups? I uh, thought maybe Ferguson had a chance. I thought Thomas had a chance, but didn't really see that happen here, unfortunately. Defensively, oh yeah, Tyler Smith went up in dev. Defensively, uh, nobody went up in dev to my knowledge, not even Bell. So Bell had a breakout chance near the end of the season, didn't get it, and I was kind of crapping myself that we didn't like re-sign him. Still kind of thinking maybe we should re-sign him. I don't know, 81 overall. I suppose I could say, oh, well, EA has it wrong, but the Cowboys don't always win the Super Bowl year one. I think it's our drafting that did it, let's be honest. It was our drafting. Uh, but Tyler Smith, who I love in the game so much, even as a normal dev, which I think he is now star. He started this rebuild, at least star. Uh, you know, he's always so good to grab in a fantasy draft. I think it's going to change a bit, though, which obviously I do an updated fantasy draft like any kind of milestone there is. So obviously once the playoffs are over and the Super Bowl is won and all that by whoever, uh, we will end up doing an updated one of that as well. So we should have some updated names in there and uh, positioning for them. Uh, but looking at uh, the the Ravens, they won 21-7 over the Bills. 
And yeah, the Bills 28 to 3 over the Colts. And then only by three but the Chargers in fairness. But the Colts game, I mean, that's a big game. And then they get smoked on by the Ravens. I don't know. But uh, here it is, 13-4 versus 12-5. and five. A little bit of a weird rebuild. Maybe a shorter one because we could win it this first season. Here we go. One game here away from being Super Bowl champions. Definitely makes the rebuild weird because uh, in real life, the Cowboys are in a little bit more of a shaky spot than they're going to win it next year. Sure, they could. But... There's a lot of question marks in that organization right now. 31 of it's go, it's over. We've won the Super Bowl. 38 to 20, 41 to 22, and Jerry Jones and company uh, are on top of the football world. Um, it's weird because like I never really thought of it that way, but watching the broadcast, obviously from that wild card game against the Packers, uh, you know them talking about how like the Cowboys, it really is a different world, right? Like it's like so theatrical, and it's like. It does feel like the media attention is just so much more on them. And, like, the players aren't even just playing. They're, like, it's like they're in a Broadway show. Like, it's like they're playing their part. And it is, like, I know there's storylines across the league. But it's just, like, how many other teams, like, owner, GM or whatever, has, like, all these news reporters waiting where they're expected to wait, you know, outside the, the booth or whatever, you know, the suite you know, waiting for an interview. Like, how many times do you see that where there's, like, a billion people waiting for the owner and, like, the owner's so vocal in the, in the you know, public eye and the media. It's just, there's a lot going around. And, you know, he just, like, Jerry Jones just doesn't seem like he can take any credit for, right? He's, like, the first thing he says is, like, we know who's, uh, you know, the first people that, uh, you know, gets the blame for something like this. It's, like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> He just throws the team under the bus and, like, he just doesn't, like, I don't know. He just, he doesn't care about any of the people. He just wants the title itself. Like, he, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm way off base, but that's the way I feel about it. He's like, everyone's just, like, another number. Coaching staff, player staff, you know, whatever. And he just wants the ring. He doesn't really care who's a part of it. You know, he doesn't really care about building a culture, it seems. Like, it's just about, you know, the actual end result and not about building what it takes to get there, you know? And I don't know. And it's just like, there's a lot of deflection and, you know, so much thea theatrics, like I said. And I know, it doesn't feel like it's just simply football in Dallas. There's just so much more to it. And, you know, and I guess a big stadium like that with the big screen kind of uh, alludes to that as well. But we want a Super Bowl. And that's that's really what matters to us here. And just like him, I guess. <laughs> Who's Brian Thomas? Who's that? Is that a guy we drafted like five years ago? <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we are uh okay in money but once again if we're trying to keep someone like tyron smith who i don't even know if he's here oh my god is there even a point honestly i don't know if there's a point because i want to keep tyler smith anyways but if i don't do the fifth year option how this helps me is that his resign interest is green right now whereas i don't know what his interests are ones if you know we wait a year and the interests are no longer green but I do think we probably have to get rid of Zach Martin and Tyron Smith. Usually you see the AI keep Zach Martin, if I'm not mistaken. You don't really see him in free agency as much, but Tyron almost always goes. We can tag one of them. Uh, realistically, if we wanted to go crazy and risk it, we could re-sign Martin, tag Tyron, and fifth-year option Tyler. But I really think we got to save money. Ah, man, dude, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do here. Like, what do I actually do in this situation? Because obviously Tyron's not going to accept a one-year 20. I think free agency be better in the long term. I think we're just screwed, okay? We're going to see what it looks like for the future of the Dallas Cowboys without Zach Martin and Tyron Smith. Of course, we're losing some other guys like Odigazua and Bell and Leighton Vander Esch. But as far as, like, pure importance, pure cornerstone goes, those, those other names we mentioned, they're a little bit higher up on that list, obviously. Uh, and we're losing them both because we're we're that low in money. Maybe I should have seen if there was any way can get you know anyone we can get rid of. Maybe there's still a chance to get them back anyways. But I really just don't think there is. I think Gallup still you know you know, he still has that that penalty if we lose him. And Donovan Wilson, you can't. I mean, there's just nobody to save money with. I mean, we have 20 million right now, and I don't even feel comfortable with it. And that's after losing all that talent. So. I just think we have to rebuild through the draft with the offensive line. Tua goes to free agency. There's a lot of people crapping on him right now with the Dolphins, saying never win a Super Bowl with him. And Mari Cooper, the former Cowboys in free agency. There's some names here, but once again, we just can't afford them. Rasul would be a guy that I would bring in, in as a safety, but I just don't think that's a need either right now. I mean, it's just not on the top of my needs list. 
Lane Vander Esch was asking for too much money, so we pretty much had no choice to get rid of him. Uh, DT, it'd be nice to get like somewhat of a proven DT. Uh, I don't think Reader really fits the scheme too well, though, so I think an Armstead would be great, but he's asking for a lot of money, too. Odigazua, you know, he was just you know, not influential enough for me to keep, and the ceiling is kind of already reached, whereas... At least with a guy like Reader, Stewart, Armstead, even like their their ratings now are pretty good. Stewart specifically, and then obviously Armstead's pretty good at getting into the quarterback. But I think it might just be like you know super reload time because it's not a normal reload. You're losing a lot of starters, and I don't know if we have that ability to replace them. It'd be nice to get Marquise Bell back on like a two year fourteen. Is he chilling with a two-year 14? He might be able to, right? 26 isn't crazy bad, and his rating, especially for coverage, is actually pretty damn good for his overall. Usually you don't see, uh, you know, we, I think Patrick Queen and all of them are, like, way lower than that. So we lose a little bit of money, but we keep a linebacker. I mean, we just can't afford to, like, you know, replace every single position. Multiple linemen, a DT, you know, there, there's too much to replace to be to be replacing all in one offseason with only, you know, a first, a second, no third or fourth round picks, so I think it would be nice to keep one of them. Who is that? Is that um, Julian Love? Interesting. It's a lot of money, though, because he's asking for multiple years. Like a two-year, like 20 maybe, but he's asking for more than that. And as far as the offensive line goes, don't think there's going to be a cheap enough option for us to go with. Zach Martin, I mean, so much money, dude. So much money. Center, I think we're fine at for now, but we probably still will look to replace in case there's an option uh, and then I think with uh, Taylor Decker or Bowles, I might try to get one of them. Neither really has the interest on the team, so it's going to be hard to lowball. But if Garrett Bowles wants to do a one-year 12, eh, we'll do a one-year 10. He's not going to accept it, but maybe we get just the luckiest luck of all, Luckington. Uh, but let's see what we get as we don't get even Bell. I mean, we're getting nobody out here. Damn, son. Thankfully, nobody wants them, but yeah, it does not look like it's going to go well for us. All right, pick 32. Obviously, that's kind of what happens when you win the Super Bowl. Uh, and I had a couple of guys in the first round, but I don't know if I'm actually going to take the, any of them. If one of the edge rushers there, it'd be really hard to pass. Uh, I did scout a lot of players, but we kind of ran out of like the special kind of focus scouting. Uh, so I don't really know who to go with there. I will say, though, corner is tough, too, because even though we don't need a corner, these guys look fantastic. Insanely fast. He's got the name Hayden, so we know of Joe Hayden. <laughs> I don't know if that's how that works, but A catch, A man, B press, B zone coverage. And then Roberson as well, 2-3, to 6-4 with really good athleticism. B catch, A man, B press, B zone, but... I don't know what to do here because, I mean, we have other needs, right? Like, we we have a first and a second. I don't think we have a third or a fourth. I need linemen. Graham is one of those really good-looking linemen. Um, this DT type of player, I scouted him. Oh, no, I didn't scout him further. I thought I did. Uh, far, I think I should go to, like, 15 in the second, maybe 12 in the second, and grab far. No? But the problem is the Vikings aren't really giving me much. I know this isn't a crazy jump, but, like, they're trying to pull what we pull by giving a bunch of draft picks up. The value equals, even though it doesn't feel like it. So I might try to trade with the Vikings, but actually try to get something legit off of them. Here we go. We traded a uh, six this year, a fifth next year, and a seventh the following year to get the third round pick off the Vikings and their second round pick this year, which is about 13 spots back. Uh, and they end up going with a wide receiver, Cody Crockett. I don't know really if that's a positional need for them, but... I'm hoping because, you know, two to three is usually mid to late that our player is there. Who is this? Another 6'4"? 20? Wait, I didn't put him on... How didn't I put him on my list? I think it's because he was around one and I just didn't expect him to be there. There's a good chance that that guy is a very good player. I don't know what it is. Hayden and Roberson are still there, dude. Oh my god, bro. I mean, I need DT, D-end. Uh, I could really use two of them, to be honest. But I think just based on needs alone, Farr has to be our guy. Gerald Farr, A power move, great um, bench press reps, B tackle, B finesse, B block. She looks amazing. And he's normal dev. That sucks. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, he's still going to be a, a starter, but that does suck. Don't need the corner, but honestly, at this point, the value is too immense not to take. And I think I might trade up for Hayden here. I don't really want to, though, but is the other corner still there? 
Oh, the other corner is gone now, which is, you know, it's something. Hayden. Oh, wait. Wait, what? Were both of the 6-4 corners named Roberson? What, I'm so confused. Oh, Jefferson. Oh, I misread that hard. Either way, we can move down a little bit more. They're still there somehow. There goes Hayden. I mean, I liked Hayden more, but I still like Roberson. I, I think you trade up for him, right? I think this is a smart call. Although, we need multiple linemen, don't we? I'm trying to think of what we need. I can't. I can't. I want the corner, but A, I just don't need it. And B, I need more other players, right? I don't know what that means, but I need, like, two starters. I don't think we got... Uh, I mean, I'll check, but I don't know if we got any of the players we were looking for. Did we get... I just hit the mic. My bad. I have to actually look at roster because they don't auto-reorder, uh, which I like because you can choose to put it on. I never do because it just messes everything up, even though a lot of times I go best overall anyways. Uh, we did not get the uh, left tackle, and it doesn't appear that we got Bell back, so we really need a linebacker. We really need two linemen. Last second, I decided to, to knock over the corner, and I think that was the right call. I really do. So uh, with this... We got a couple of linebackers. I have no idea who I want. Uh, but I will say offensive line is is really bad here. So I think I take Cohen and then I trade up because we're desperate. I think Cohen plays right guard and then the other guy plays left tackle. Thankfully, hidden dev. But, I mean, we need starters, right? I mean, obviously, we could use Terrence Steele if we have to, but I'd prefer not to. And I really don't want to lose that other guard. But at the same time, I would like to keep this draft pick where it is as much as possible. Nah, I can't. I can't risk him anymore. I don't know if we get a linebacker, but we really need one. So, holy crap, would we have been screwed if we traded up for a corner that we just didn't need. We traded eight spots using Tolbert, really. Jalen Tolbert. I tried to get a fourth next or this year from them, and it just wasn't going. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I, I just need this trade, and I need to save as many draft picks as I can. Uh, with this pick, we're going to be taking Hugh Graham, who I definitely wanted even more than the other guy. If this guy wasn't hidden, I'd be shocked. Yeah, I mean... Hidden Dev doesn't always correlate with ratings, but that guy's potentials looked ridiculous. Now, we do have a couple of linebackers. We could use more than one, but honestly, at this point, with our draft capital, we're lucky to get one. Roberson's still there. And Springs is still there. I might... Hmm. I don't know, dude. I really need multiple linebackers. Freeman looks the best because he's a middle linebacker, but Blakely I could live with. DB I kind of need going forward, so... I'm just hoping all these guys stick around, and if I see a team that has two draft picks, like, back-to-back, -back, I might trade a second-round pick for it. I think it's that, like... Oh, Roberson goes. I think these these players that are here are worth that much. I really don't want to lose the safety either. He's actually pretty good-looking, too. Freeman goes. I don't think we can trade up, though. Like, we're barely going to be able to get this one trade in. There's no team with multiple picks either, it seems. There goes where. So we have no choice but to trade up here if we want a linebacker. Dolphins. All right, I didn't want these players, but they were so broke is the only way to make it happen. Schoonmaker, uh, a fourth next and a fifth this year to move all the way up to 82, which is, you know, not really that costly for us. But obviously we lose a star dev backup tight end, but we're not using them. Obviously with Ferguson uh, kind of taking the next step. This is a tough one for me because we really need the linebacker, but I think safety is such a hard position for me to draft. And I don't really know how good he is, but a B tackle with a minimum C zone is usually someone I would draft at this kind of range. So it's kind of hard to tell because I really like Blakely as well, but I think, I mean, we need linebacker more now. Yeah, I think I sold myself on that. We need linebacker more now. DeAndre Blakely. And he's hidden. A little bit slower than I would have thought. I know he is a 4.62, but I thought maybe 86, 87 speed based on that left side. I think it was great speed listing. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to make a trade up with the Rams, but, you know, thinking about what positions we need for the future, safety is one of them, right? So, you know, looking at that, I mean, maybe not even for the future, maybe even right now, you know, we have some, some older guys that aren't going to develop. They're only going to go down. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone we can get rid of though, to, uh, to make that trade happen, but, uh, we're going to try. We're probably going to be taking the hit on Gallup, but whatever gets this trade done a fourth next year. Oh, it's two years from now? Did I skip over on accident? Either way, the AI took it, so it's not my job to to make their trades uh, fair or not. Because a lot of times, you know, when we're trading down from that high first round kind of spot, they usually lowball us. So, you know, this time they got screwed. Whatever. Matthew Springs. Oh, hidden. A little bit slower than I would have thought, not going to lie. But 
that's not bad speed. 6'2 with, you know, 87 speed, 87 change of direction, 92 excel, 90 jump. He's actually semi-athletic when you really look at some of those other ratings that most guys don't really have. And then the uh, Mr. Irrelevant pick of maybe a punter because we don't have a punter, I don't think. I think that's that's probably the only option we got here. Or maybe a fullback or something. We really need a new running back backup at least, but it is what it is. We're... Uh, we're fine. We're we're working. Plus, we have um, you know, a little bit of money to spend in free agency. Finally, I uh, don't know if there's gonna be a good punter. This guy actually looks really good. So maybe we already found one. He is decent kick power. Okay, I mean that A is really misleading. Let's just go in order. Except for Shane Martin. Even if he has good kick power, I don't care. I shouldn't even have looked at this guy either. Great kick power. Both looking the same. Brothers. Uh, Hurley also 23. Good kick power. Hurley is so far in the lead. Rob Williams, I feel like I've seen that name before as well, and maybe not. Uh, it's going to potentially be Hurley here. It is. Poor kick power there. So Hurley's the best. Not by, you know, a much, but should be good enough. And he is normal dev. 92 kick power. Hopefully something in, like, the mid-70s for punting accuracy, but that's all right. Williams getting us an offer. I mean, fifth-round pick's not bad, but Hodgins as well. All right, draft recap. What we got? 76 for the DT, though. I, I'm I'm kind of like thinking about what we even drafted because it was kind of a long draft. We got a lot of you know draft picks in there. Didn't cost us too much in the future, but once again, kind of missing a couple of picks. Uh, but we did trade down, and it was a worthy one, even though far as normal. 76 overall is very good, obviously. Oh, with 82 power move, I, I live for that every time. I'm not even worried about it. Do want to see those corners, though, see how much we sold. Cohen's got to play right guard, so we might as well move him over now and take a look at what we did for ourselves. Maybe a special dev? Damn, that would have been sick. Tyler Smith could actually play left guard, or left tackle, so... I mean, he wants that big payday. Maybe maybe that's where he plays. Graham can play left tackle too, though. He's got a little bit of athleticism. He's got the size for it, and he's got really good pass block. So I think Graham will just play left tackle, let Tyler Smith work where he's been working. And let's take a look at the dev. Star would have been great to see Superstar. But brand new line, who dis? We got new players around here. Blakely, I mean, he's undersized. Really doesn't fit the mold for what this team needs on the inside, but... I mean, it's a linebacker. I'm just going to make the argument he's playing inside linebacker. What can I do? Uh, let's put him at 56, I guess. Why the hell? <laughs> Yo, there's no way. I had to click no because I have not seen an X-Factor in a while for me. Just to show you guys, you know, we didn't change it somehow. Some weird editing trick. You guys know my editing. Trust me, I ain't getting, pa I ain't getting any edits past anyone. My editing looks like a damn, like, 1970s sci-fi at best if I'm, I'm trying to do something like that. But unbelievable. An X Factor. That is the type of pick we need. That is huge. Linebacker, at least one of the positions, is set. Woo, we take that. We take that. I almost didn't take him. Of course, we end up with the safety anyways, but imagine I'm taking the safety and passed on the linebacker. Oh, my. Oh, my. Let's take a look at Springs now, the safety, though, speaking of. Star dev. That would have been a huge sell to lose an X-Factor for a star dev safety, but obviously we got both. 79 accuracy is pretty good, 92 kick power, and then obviously I want to see these corners. I really want to see the corner that nobody wanted. You know, like, I, I didn't put him on my board because I just didn't think he was going to be there, you know, as first round, uh, round one talent. And, yeah, I don't know what it is. There's something about the 6'4 corners that just glitches out in the game because he's six foot four. he's star dev, he's 22, he's a 76 overall. He's good. He is really good. Uh, I think Hayden was probably a little bit better of a corner, though, and, yeah, he was 78 overall, hidden dev as well. Uh, 81 man coverage. I mean, these corners are so good. And we knew we, they would be. But at the same time, we just don't have a need for corner. Superstar for Hayden. Damn, that really sucks. But uh, we just don't have a need for corner. So unless I risk next year, which I could have, you know, for a position we, you know, position we don't really need, I think it would have been pretty dumb. 77 overall. Uh, Roberson to the Packers. Okay, I feel a little bit better about not going Roberson. But he's great as well. And, you know, we got 290 overall corners. And assuming we can afford Bland. Corner is not a problem for us. So I just... I couldn't make the argument for trading the future away for a position we may never really need. Um, but, yeah, we actually have money for free agents now, which is great. And we just came off a super win. What could be better? So we definitely lost some players, right? We uh, we lost the linebackers. We lost the left tackle and the right guard. But we've done a good enough job or the 
best job we really could in fixing uh, the positions we couldn't afford to keep. Uh, defensively, new DT, but he has a higher upside than anyone else that was here before. Uh, Blakely obviously has a way higher upside than anyone here before. And as much as I'd like to start Springs, Wilson is 81 overall. So we're going to give him at least one more season here as a starter just to see if we can maybe win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. $68 million, We got to pay uh, Parsons and Bland. Clark is, I mean, that's a fair contract. Ferguson may need to be replaced, though. I, I we, we can't afford all of these players. And, you know, if I'm looking at what position can I replace, can I replace a kind of slow uh, tight end? Probably. Smith probably loses his uh, future here as well. This team is not that easy to rebuild. Obviously, Park is, <laughs> Parkinson's. Parsons needs a contract that we have to pay out. A seven-year 238. There's no way he turns down a quarter billion dollars, bro. Uh, but let's go with Bland now. Obviously, we have to keep him as well, even though he's only star. Seven year, 40, 74. I mean, 16 mil left. We'd have to choose between who we want. And Clark's ratings are kind of mid, so I think he would just replace another linebacker. He's not bad. He's fast, but he's not worth spending our very last dime on, I don't think. And as far as Ferguson goes, he's not bad. But I, once again, we're so broke that... You have to make these types of decisions, and I just think that tight end, a faster tight end, would probably even help us in the uh, long run anyways. So keep the kicker as well, because he obviously has a not a high ceiling, but he's star dev, so why not? And uh, we're down to 11 mil. Probably have to use a little bit more to get Parsons back. So more starters needing to be replaced, but a little bit less of a hit this season, I think. To the wild card round, and I think we're going to have a bye week here. We will. Even though we lost to the Niners, uh, we were two games ahead of them, and we still have the bye week. As you can see, the Packers were very close at 12-5, and five, another couple of 12-5 and five teams, but we had that 13-4 and four season yet again, and this time it was good enough to actually, you know, get the first seed, which is great. Uh, Dak seemed to have played worse, though, which is a little surprising, but uh, let's take a look at the season anyways. Really good start, a couple of losses here and there, but overall, a pretty damn good season, you know, nonetheless. Let's take a look, though, at what the actual stats look like for the team. As Dak Prescott, about 4,600 yards, 34 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. Great again, but just, you know, worse technically. Pollard never plays well in Sim. I don't know what it is. He just doesn't play well in Sim. Lamb was pretty good. Uh, Thomas was a little bit better than last year, kind of. Ferguson was pretty good again. And then Sturdivant, uh, very good touchdown rate. But definitely a worse uh, season overall. Lamb had more yards last season, more touchdowns by a lot, and... This year, though, offensive line killed it. Left tackle was really good, and right guard was, you know, just good if not better than Zach Martin. So what can I complain about there? The edge was great. Far should go up in dev. Uh, Bland was decent with his picks. Aubrey, pretty good. I mean, the team's still playing pretty well, despite the fact that we are technically getting worse each season. But then again, our wide receiver two position is so much better than it was year one. Um, Prescott, number three for MVP, which is still pretty good. It's significant. Uh, any award wins at all, oh, 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 it would have been so nice. Far should go up in dev still, but no guarantees, right? Uh, running back at number seven, wide receiver at number four, uh, O-line at number six and eight, D-line at number two and five, best linebacker not on the list, sadly, DB at eight, and then kicker at three. So, pretty good year again, uh, back in the playoffs, obviously, with the bye week this time, and going on to the division round to see who we play against, which is the Eagles. Okay, normally I don't really care about these kind of scenarios, but I'm actually going to click this playoff rivals one, because it is kind of a special matchup here. Uh, chess match, play rec, I would always take over hit power. Um, that's really, well, maybe not when I'm usering, I think hit power probably would be better, but as far as, like, this situation goes, play rec, I think, matters a lot more than hit stick or hit power, but very close. Both teams very, uh, similar in overall. Here we are going to the end of the game. 7-0, still 7-0. 7-3, 7-10, to 14-10, nice touchdown before half, but then they get one back. We almost always score a touchdown in the first drive of the third quarter. We do again. It's 24 all. We're now up by seven. Good stop. One more score should do it. We're in position. Just play it safe. They say no. We want the touchdown, and we're headed to the championship round. The Eagles, no match for this Dallas Cowboys team, apparently, even though it was kind of close for a while. Looking at the touchdown pick ratios, both teams, both quarterbacks played damn near perfectly. Pollard crushed it finally, though. Hurts a couple of plays on the ground as he does. Brian Thomas 
137 yards with one touchdown. Lamb with 66 yards and two touchdowns. Kind of the opposite role, if you will, uh, compared to last year. Parsons did well. Carter did well. Lawrence did well. No interceptions. Both kickers were perfect. I mean, pretty clean game, right? It's just we scored more, got more stops. Championship round. Who is it? Oh, the Niners. We kind of thought that was going to be the matchup year one. It's in year two instead. 87 overall versus the 89 overall. San Francisco 49ers. Can we win to back to back? Of course, we have lost those linemen, lost some linebackers, but we're still right in the mix, and the Raiders are into the Super Bowl. That is a hell of a glow up, but let's see if we can beat the San Fran 49ers. Good stop, no score. They get a stop, they get a score. 3 to 0 so far, 6 to 0 at halftime, and no third quarter touchdown to start it off. I mean, we're kind of getting smoked here, but there's still a chance. Driving down, need a touchdown, we get it. 11 minutes left. The stop, I don't even know what happened, but we're at our own eight, driving down the field, and this is a huge drive, and they score 17 all. We need a stop so bad, and they don't get it. That's going to be game, but they don't kick it. Maybe they missed it. I don't know. Our ball, driving down the field. I don't care how we get here, as long as we win, and we do. I do want to see what happened, even though, you know, maybe we didn't deserve to be there. Okay, maybe, maybe you know, somehow 58 seconds went away running the ball for negative three yards from the nine. Maybe that's what happened. I don't understand how that's possible, but a win's a win, baby. <laughs> a win's a win. All I did is sim, so, you know, what, what can you say? Uh, pretty good pass rush battle. Fred Warner with a pick. We're somehow in the Super Bowl again. I don't know. We're uh, we're cooking. Like, I've seen this. the Cowboys do well, but they don't win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. They don't even win three in a row. They don't even get to two in a row half the time. You know, it's they really haven't been the team as of late in Madden. Maybe, you know, a couple months ago. But as of late, they are not, like, the guaranteed Super Bowl winners every year. Going to the Super Bowl against the Raiders. See if we have any dev ops. I would really like to see Thomas go up and dev here. Wouldn't even surprise me to see Ferguson go up and dev, but still got to let him go unless money just shows up out of nowhere. Thomas? Damn, Ferguson didn't go up and dev either, actually. Uh, defensively, anyone? Far did not go up and dev. How? How is that possible? Overshone went up to star, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. He's just, like, a, a valuable, like, I don't know, contributor, I guess. He's not really, like, going to be much, though. But I can't believe uh, Far with nine and a half sacks didn't go up as a rookie. That's an amazing rookie year, but it is what it is. We are in the Super Bowl going against the Raiders. 84 overall for them, 87 for us. Going to the end of the game, 0-0, zero to 7-0. Zero. to zero. All right, good stop, good touchdown, 14-0. to 14-7, 21-7, to seven. this could be it. One more score would do it. It's not over yet. The Raiders are driving. They could tie it, and they do. And they have the ball. They could actually win the game. Oh, a pick. And then we get screwed. No way. We get the touchdown. Not going to get the stop, probably. A field goal could win it. Oh, my God. They just went backwards so much. How fitting would it be for us to live? We were 21 to 7 in the fourth quarter, and the team just couldn't do anything. This is crazy, bro. CD Lamb. That wind up so bad, but CD holds on. What a play. Field goal wins it. Come on, offense. Come on, offense. Looking good. And they win back to back. I mean, there's not really much more you could do than back to back. Except for three in a row. We're going to be going for the three Pete. Next season to finish his rebuild out. It's safe to say the Cowboys scheme's pretty good. Now, the team is still really strong. Obviously, you know, we're missing those linemen and the linebackers aren't that good, but we still have very good receivers. Very solid running back, even though he doesn't really play that well, but he's pretty good in the playoffs. Dax and X Factor over 90. Got a couple of okay linemen still, even though we lost some of them. Uh, and the rookie class is really good, obviously. The, the, the youngsters have been great. Edge is amazing. Corners are amazing. So. You know, this team has some holes, but their very good players are very good, right? Lawrence and Parsons have, in Madden, played like the best uh, duo in the league, and the corners are really, really good, and we talked about those receivers. So the team is very good. It's just it's missing a few things, right? So 
Going to keep trying to fill those needs. Uh, Tua, as a Raider, shouldn't even have been there. Uh, unlikely, unless they go crazy trade mode uh, to make that happen. But Pollard, very good in the playoffs. Just not great in the regular season. But hey, if I could trade off any one of them, I would take that. I would take that every time. Lawrence, three sacks. Might be on his way out, to be fair. Bland and Trayvon Diggs. I mean, it was like a complete game from all of the players that we needed to play well. It's it's just clutch. I mean, you can't ask for a better uh, a better playoff run, really, especially that Super Bowl. And I'll show you guys, uh, you know, win-loss and enforce anything just to, to have a quick rebuild to post or something like that. Man, it's just the Cowboys are kind of that team in sim. I don't know. They're just they're good. Going to the next week. Let's see those re-signings. We probably do have a little bit of money, so if we had to, or we felt like it was the smart thing to do, we could re-sign some players. If Ferguson is actually asking for... Oh, we can't. I just thought about it. The reason why we have money is because Micah Parsons turned down all of my 30-plus million dollar offers, so this is going to be a tag for him. It's going to cost a lot of money. Oh, of course, now it's green because of how well we did. I mean, we'll save money anyways, but that is so annoying. $17 million, we can choose between... Ferguson or Clark. I think it's easy to replace Clark, but I, I almost want to replace both because I, I just don't know if Ferguson is worth this money. I don't know. He's been good for us, but I, I can't even say, is it the Cowboys scheme? Because they don't really do super well in sim with tight ends, do they? Two-year 22. I mean, it's a lot less money, so I'm willing to do it. Uh, and I think you lose everyone else. So once again, still losing some significant names, right? We're losing Sam Williams, but there's a good chance in the first round, unless maybe linebacker if there's a really good one, but first round might be edge anyways because we got to replace Lawrence soon. Maybe even now, I didn't even check, you know, because he was, what, 32 years old. What, did we re-sign him this year? Maybe it was two year, a year ago? He could be retired even. You know, he's going to be a low overall here, 84 overall, 34. He's got one year left in him. He's still pretty good. But he is lacking. You know, he's definitely regressed. So, really his last chance to be uh, an elite player, if you will. And uh, looking at the defense, definitely need that linebacker position up. Safety could be another name, uh, another position. DT Smith really just hasn't developed. And more importantly, I just I think we can do better. So, uh, definitely not screwed at DT, but DT's up there. So, I mean, I'm trying to think what we do. Edge? Edge in the first round, a future proof for uh, for Lawrence, and maybe we get really lucky and land a guy that's you know a gunner out the gate, just burning. Uh, but apparently, 16 mil is what we have. I'm not really sure how that's possible. They just said we had six, and now we have 16. Uh, could go with this guy for the DT spot. Oh, 25 mil. They haven't been left end. They think he's an edge rusher. Uh, Travis Kelsey. Oh, we kept the tight end. We could add Travis, although his speed is really bad right now. Uh, Edwards, he's a little bit expensive, but if we're really believing that this is the last season, which is how we're playing it, I mean, we can afford to make that play, right? Because, you know, why not? But Clark would have been great to bring back anyways because he's like the same overall. 71 block shed versus, I mean, they're both pretty similar. It's just Edwards is a little bit faster. Maybe we go get Clark back. Could do it, right? Maybe a two-year deal worth, I don't know, 18 might be possible. Let's see. For the highest team, uh, I suppose Milano, last ditch effort, is like somewhat on the cheaper side. So maybe. Two year 19, just to say, hey, we got our guy back. Damn, we, I mean, we're very close to being able to get this full green. So two year 20, maybe that's enough. Well, whatever it be, there it is. Two year 20, I'll get it done. Six million left. I don't think there's going to be, like, a position that we're going to be able to get here that'll, like, vastly improve us anywhere. So, uh, I think we're, we're chilling after that. I think that's just what we're going to be dealing with is hopefully Clark coming back to the squad. Maybe a backup running back if there's, like, a cheap enough one with no, like, offers on him. Going for Camara, who usually does just hit free agency anyways. If he doesn't join us, it's fine. Clark's back, which is great news. And Camara does join us on a one-year uh, 3.8, so... Really up against it again, but get a little bit uh, of depth back with that running back position and don't have to replace every linebacker ever because Clark's back. So we just need one linebacker, a DT, and an edge rusher, which I think we can easily uh, pull off. And here we are in the draft. Another pick, 32 for us. There's a couple of edge rushers, but most of them are really high. So unless somebody slips, there's a very good chance that we just don't. There's one of them already. That we just don't land one. It just it's just the way it is. Like the best guy I seen 
was obtainable in the round one talent grade, and he was like a B finesse or something like that. I actually think with Young gone there, that's like all of them gone already. And then there was a guy named Lane, but, I mean, he wasn't very good either. Like I said, he had like a B in pass rush or something, but I guess I'll take a look as 14 is at least more obtainable than anything higher than that, but I, I still just don't think we're going to get there. Uh, you can see Lane there for a second. Uh, all the other guys are not really grabbable. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's literally just Lane, and even then, he's a B finesse. Like, am I really about to trade up for a B finesse? I don't know. I just, I think that's, that's just crazy, especially since he's a one, round one talent grade, and he's not gone yet, so maybe he is pretty bad. Well, he goes to the Falcons. Let's move on to our next pick. But uh, we do see a DT-type player in Josh Harris, who looks really, really good, and he is actually pretty athletic, so worst case, he probably could play edge if we had to play in there. Safety is really nice, too, with Hopkins, so uh, we could use DT, but at the same time, what do we got? We got we got Morgan and Patton and Garrison. I mean, that, that D end, Harris looks really good, but he's not that fast, right? Oh, he's actually slow. I think I might be mixing him up with uh, a different 1-2 to two or 2-3 to three D end I had. Uh, I think I'm going to take Hopkins here. I think uh, pure value-wise, he is, even though he's uh, you know on the shorter side, I think he's the highest value here. First round safety is crazy, but I'm going to do it anyways. And he's hidden. That's a, that's a win. That is a win. Depending on Malik Hooker's ratings, he could even start over him if he's good enough of an overall. We now move on to 32 in the second round as we don't really have that many draft picks to be trading up with anyways. And honestly, we don't even have that many needs to be trading up for anyways. Uh, I think with the A tackle, Robinson is 286. He's good enough to be our hopefully new DT2. Yes, head and dev. Strengths on the lower side, but that's a win. Because if he's normal, I can't really start him. Nah, I probably would have started him over uh, Smith anyways. Ow, punch the microphone arm. Damn it, sometimes I get so into like the rebuild that I don't even pay attention to what I'm doing, and I just smack it. Uh, do we need O-line? I think we're kind of chilling, no? Other than, like, if we can't afford someone. But as far as, like, pure talent-wise, we're chilling. Uh, I think we have two linebackers minimum that I would take. Uh, Strong and Pierman. Might be a little high, but we traded a six-round pick to the Niners uh, with our third-round pick to move up three spots. Strong went to the Chiefs. So uh, Pierman is going to be our guy. Or Pierman, I always mix that name up. Uh, is going to be our guy, and uh, he looks pretty good. I think Strong might have been better, but he still looks pretty good. Caleb Pierman, and he's hidden. I mean, I can't really ask for a much better draft than that. I would have liked an edge rusher, like I said, but at worst case, we throw the whole book at, you know, pick 10, pick 15 to grab a pass rusher next season or something like that, but obviously that's not really what we're going to be doing anyways. Is we're going for our third straight Super Bowl win. Win or lose, we can't do better, right? We can't. We've, we've won back-to-back. So we cannot do better than back-to-back -back other than a three-peat. And if we lose, well, the three-peat's gone, right? So uh, I think we kind of maybe need another kicker or punter. So we'll find out if we have uh, something like that going on here. And outside of basically another Mar from Home Alone, there's really no options. So 95 kick power, James Doris. Take a look at the team we, uh, we drafted here in uh, this latest draft class. See what we're cooking with. Of course, the DT sad. No, he was hidden. I was about to say sadly normal, but he wasn't. Uh, Jaleel Hopkins, 79 zone coverage, first round pick. Totally worth it. Get that fifth year option as well for a position that, you know, I don't usually like to pay anyways. 81 finesse for Hopkins. Uh, Hopkins. Robinson, I probably should have looked at Hopkins dev. Did we even look? I'm going to look at it in a sec. Star dev, 51 is an interesting number to say the least. But uh, let's take a look at Hopkins, who would be playing free safety, so we got to move him there anyways. I uh, don't know if he'll play this season, but maybe. Uh, Dev, superstar. I mean, we've got ourselves a really good draft pick there. Uh, and then the linebacker, Pearman. Pearman, uh, is it left out we need, I think? 80 tackle, decent zone, decent block shed. I think we'll play him at left outside linebacker, I think. His Dev, also superstar. That is a win. Uh, I should have seen how good of an overall or how big he is because maybe he needs to play middle linebacker more. Yeah, I mean, he fits better than Barkley at that spot, but Barkley went up in devs or overall so high, I just don't want to change him. And then Punter, 74 overall, probably don't need to look at him because he's going to be a starter just with the kick power alone. And same accuracy, so there's that. Was there a draft pick? I guess I want to take a look at Lane from the Falcons just to see if it would have been worth trading up for him, but overall that's pretty much it.
He is hidden. Okay, 73 overall. Pretty mid, but decent enough. 83, you know, 85 strength. Okay, speed. Decent pass rush ability with star dev. I mean, that seems like a late first round pick type of player to me. Didn't get a lineman because all the linemen were like early-ish in the third, I would imagine. You know, early mid. Kind of was paying attention to some of the names going, but just didn't need that position that much. So I was like, let's not kill next year's draft classes. In theory, we would need a pass rusher probably, so... Why not uh, save money? Here we are for the final season in Season 3. Uh, this is what the squad looks like. Is Lamb actually maxed already? Damn, he's already maxed. How good is he? Damn, son. Of course, you'd like that speed and excel to get up a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. You're cooking that hard. Very good juke ability, all that stuff. Uh, Thomas, 86 overall. It'd be nice to get him go going a little bit more. It'd be nice if you've got a dev up. Uh, the big thing about this season's team that is worse than any of the other ones is the depth. The depth sucks. Pretty much all of our backups are like 60 overalls. We found a couple of like decent star devs that maybe develop a little bit because they're young, but overall, it is a bunch of low overalls, basically. Uh, Overshown's basically the backup edge, which he has like 73 finesse, so it is not a great team for depth, but the starters are as good as ever, and uh, there's some upside at some of those positions as well for once, so I mean, maybe uh, maybe we can pull off the three-peat, but that uh, that depth, if depth matters, it might be a GG. Ah, uh, Parsons is back. So that freaking red 4-3 uh, under, historic championships, close to home. I mean, if he doesn't want to do this, we might wait again and just hope that his, his interest goes back to green. Uh, Tyler Smith, we can't lose another lineman that is, like, elite. So a seven-year 151, a lot cheaper than the other... Well, maybe not a lot cheaper, but cheaper than the other guys... Trevon Diggs will do a two-year. Pollard, maybe a one-year. Uh, and then Demarcus Lawrence, sadly, will be gone. So, I mean, this is probably the best this team's ever going to get. So, uh, you know, it's a good cutoff point anyways, I guess, for this team. Pollard, one-year deal. Even though he's not great, he's still better than anything we're going to have after that. So, $16 million left. And technically, no one to resign because uh, Lawrence is either going to retire or he's going to be so bad that we're not going to want to keep him anyways. But uh, we were able to maneuver the team, barely, but we're we're maneuvering still. And uh, we're hoping Micah Parsons re-signs on a longer-term contract. Here we go to the playoffs. No bye week this time. Oh, one last hurrah. Looks like it's going to be Demarcus Lawrence, I would imagine. But uh, no bye week, but we're still in here, and that's all you could really ask for. Let's click that one last hurrah real quick and then go on to how the season went and the stats... Uh, yeah, Demarcus Lawrence, I mean, we just talked about it, needed a new edge rusher, couldn't really get one in the first round, so we went elsewhere, and, I mean, at least it worked out, right, uh, you know, our superstar safety going forward, Dak Press got another really good season, though, uh, rushing, Pollard was good enough, I suppose, Lamb was great, Thomas was decent, Sturdivant was really good, Ferguson on that two-year 20-something, that's why I didn't want to pay him any higher, because that was a pretty mid-season from him, blocking was decent enough, uh, the rookie, uh, DT Robinson killed it. Far was decent. Lawrence was pretty good. And then Parsons only nine and a half. It would have been four guys at double digits. And the one guy that didn't participate was somehow Parsons. I don't even know how that's possible. Clark should be a superstar. Diggs with a three sack, uh, or three interception season. Not bad. Aubrey's been really good so far. This, uh, rebuild Doris was decent kicker return, punt return game. No touchdowns. Uh, yearly award, not MVP. Number three again, looking at the uh, Player of the Year award stuff. Robinson, Rookie of the Year on defense. Dak Prescott, best quarterback, running back at number three. Uh, wide receiver at number three. O-line at number four. Uh, best D-line at number two, uh, five, and eight. Linebacker at number six. Best DB at number 10. And then kicker of the year yet again. Going against the Niners, who we were able to beat uh, last season to get to the Super Bowl. Let's see if it'll happen again. This could be a three-peat. It's doable. Going to the end of the game. The Niners, no. It's Dallas up 7-0. to 14-0. Pretty strong so far. 14-7. to seven, And it will be up by 7.5. The touchdown at, to start of the third quarter. The long drive touchdown. So clutch for us. And here it is as we're going to win the first game against a very strong team and move on to the divisional round. Dak Prescott, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Purdy, uh, only nine completions. Defense clutched up. Pollard, once again, the playoff performer. One and a half for Lawrence, a 
pick for Diggs. And another advancement in the playoffs. And of course, that one last hurrah morale boost every week is going to be helpful as well. If they're not already maxed uh, morale, they're going to be by the end of this one as it's another plus 20 total for morale for the defense or for the team actually as a whole as we're now moving on to the divisional round. I mean, if you beat the Niners and you are the Cowboys, there's not many other teams that are left to play. The Giants, they look decent, but still, they're not a 90 overall like us. End of the game, zero all, still three to zero. Giants coming out swinging, only field goals, but sooner or later, yeah, it's going to turn into a touchdown. Huge drive before half, we get nothing. Second half, we start off with nothing. And we do get a touchdown to start of the fourth, but this Giants team has us in hell so far. I mean, this could be it. Huge drive for the touchdown. You need a stop. I don't know if they're going to get it. It doesn't look like they are. Third and inches, the game's all on the line right here. I mean, hell, even if they don't get it, there's still a good chance to get the field goal. Run commit time. There's no other choice. You have no other choice here. And nobody gets a push at all. I think that's going to be it. Because now you have the clock going against you where you're maybe going to have like 20 seconds left. And, oh, no, we do have three timeouts. Fair enough. And they still have that field goal chance. Ran commit again. Got him with Pyramid ourselves. Let's see if we can stop this team. We missed him, but he forced him out that side. It's going to come down potentially to a missed field goal. I think he'll mid-blitz. It's a little opening, you know, for the for the run, but at least it should be pretty good for the, uh, the pass. And our guys miss every single tackle, allowing a ton of time and the guaranteed field goal. Good job, morons. If not for a block kick, this will be the end of the 3P chance. No block kick, field goal's up, and I'm barring a miracle, we have lost. I wish I would have ran a different play, I don't like this. Can I go back to the verticals? Thomas needs to somehow make a play. And another, oh no! We got it there, what a throw! There is a sliver of a chance. Maybe get an onside kick and a Hail Mary. I don't know why we're even showing this, because A, even if I hit this field goal... The odds are so low, dude. Strong onside kick seems to be the way to get the uh, the bounces. It's like the one way I've gotten onside kicks this year. And he holds on cleanly, and that will be the game. Hell of an attempt there at the end, but unfortunately the Cowboys choked and uh, just couldn't score. Uh, the Giants move on to the championship round. Let's take a look at the numbers, though. Dak Prescott throwing two interceptions. That's just never going to be uh, good enough in the playoffs. Howard was pretty mid as well. Thomas had a couple of nice plays in there. Sack totals. Lawrence had a sack. Half for Robinson and Parsons. Defense really wasn't great either. Their defense definitely came to play a little bit more than us. And the three-peat is ended. The chance at it, at least. We went back-to-back. -back. It's still pretty damn good. But I, don't know, I felt like we actually had a chance at the three-peat, which we usually don't get, obviously. But we are done, and the Giants move on. Let's see uh, the last hurrah, see if it's a guaranteed retirement. Not that it really matters to us too much, since we could probably not afford him anyways. What does he got to say? He says he has announced his retirement from the NFL. Giants do make it to the Super Bowl, in fairness, so they didn't waste the spot. But will they be able to beat the Chiefs of all teams? They will. So we lost to the Super Bowl champions. Let's take a look at these retirements. Does it actually show our retirement still, or is it... Too long gone and passed. Look at some of the names there, though. Stafford, Donald, that Cowboy uh, Rams team is done for. Lawrence does officially retire, and um, Jacoby Brissett retires, but he's a backup anyways. But let's take a look at the team as we uh, head on out of this rebuild with two straight Super Bowl wins and a nice little playoff run near the end there. But uh, Dak has obviously fallen uh, a little bit here in overall. CeeDee Lamb we already looked at, but there he is, updated uh, overall and, and all. Pollard obviously regressing hard. We re-signed him to a one-year nine. Good enough for a one-year nine. Very fast, though, which is really shocking. But, yeah, his overall is definitely taking a hit. Brian Thomas, uh, everything's amazing except for short route. Everything is amazing except for short route. He's got some speed and excel upgrades through his time here in the NFL so far. Uh, let's take a look now at Mr. Dak Prescott. He is now an 89 overall. Medium accuracy is a little iffy. Throw power is dropping, but he's still pretty damn good. Uh, and then we move on to Ferguson, I suppose, only an 84 overall. He's serviceable. He's good enough. Uh, then we look at the O-line. I do want to look at Tyler Smith and I guess the right tackle. Why not? Tyler Smith and the center, I guess. Uh, amazing. Maybe could have played left tackle, but our line actually played really well. 
Tackles are really good. Frazier is an 85 overall. Uh, normal dev. Killed it. Uh, I didn't change everyone's look, so it is what it is. What do you want from me? Uh, let's take a look at the right tackle, who is an 84 overall. Uh, very good pass block. Amazing pass block. Run block's not that great. So maybe Pollard's just sucking because the O-line is pretty bad at run block. I don't know. Uh, and then Pierman, now an X-Factor himself. So two X-Factor linebackers, a long way to go, but that's... Uh, that's a good start. That's a good start. Really good block shed and zone coverage for how young he is. Uh, and then Clark went up to superstar, so he actually kind of developed a little bit in this one. 84 overall. Decent block shed. Really good zone coverage. Superstar dev. So linebacker group is actually pretty strong. Just needs a couple more years to be truly, truly elite. Uh, Blakely, 80 overall, 24 years old. Uh, really good zone coverage. Okay block shed. Pretty good man coverage. Not that fast. Didn't even get a speed upgrade yet, but still strong. Uh, we'll take a look at Springs. Don't need to look at Hopkins because he's still like he's basically still just a rookie. Springs, 82 overall or uh, 82 zone, anyways. 80 overall. Speed still a little low, but very high ceiling on him, obviously. And we have the cornerbacks. Diggs uh, is in 91 overall with e 95 zone coverage, 84 man. Get that man coverage up, and you're really cooking with him. Obviously, would have him on two more years. Uh, Bland, 92 overall. We uh, restructured him, so you would really want him to get a freaking dev up so the regression doesn't start to hit, but obviously he's really good too in man and zone. Uh, what else do we have for the defense? Obviously we lose our right end, but let's take a look, or our left end anyways. Let's take a look at Micah Parsons. 98 finesse, 95 power move, 82 block shed. And because that block shed's kind of low, he still has three upgrade points he can use on that. Uh, and then we have Robinson, who is now a superstar dev. Uh, let's upgrade his speed rusher a little bit just so we uh, have an updated look at him. Uh, of course, you get nothing for actual speed rusher. Way to go. Maybe this will make up for it. Barely. And then we'll do a run stopper just because the AI really wouldn't be using that. And he gets a plus two to block shed with a strength. 77 block shed, but 91 finesse already. Got one strength up there, so he's now an 86. And then I suppose we'll take a look at Far, who finally went up in dev. His power move, 88. So you got two different styles on the DT spot as well. This is a team with a pretty high upside, but quarterback would become a problem shortly, really. Like, it's it's not, you know, you wouldn't think uh, Dak would last much longer than this. 34 years old, you know, a couple of year, more good years in him. But that's pretty much going to be it for this Dallas Cowboys Realistic Style Rebuild. If you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I really do appreciate continued support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Channel PK, second channel PK plays for non Madden content. Been playing Spider-Man 2. Meant to have it up on Sunday, but I was too busy watching NFL games like all weekend, so I kind of just didn't. So tomorrow that'll be up on the second channel, as I don't think I'll have a channel upload here, a main channel upload. Maybe a Texans franchise, not sure, but 100% Bears franchise and Texans franchise on Wednesday, and then another rebuild on Thursday. If you guys have a team you want to see next, let me know in the comment section below. I've got a couple of teams that I just haven't done yet in general. And there is uh, obviously some challenge rebuilds uh, stuff that I can do. So lots more content yet to come. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video.